At Cape Canaveral, the nation's newest ICBM, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, is ready for its maiden flight. The Air Force's 90-foot missile is more powerful and technically more sophisticated than the Atlas, which is nearing operational status. But the two-stage Titan is still in the development stage. Its ultimate range will be possibly as much as 9,000 miles. But in this initial firing, only the first stage engine will be tested. The second stage is essentially a dummy for proper balance. It's a test with limited objectives, and every precaution that can be taken is taken. The 110-ton missile will be held on the launching stand for six seconds following ignition to be sure that there is no initial misfire in the crucial first moments of flight. The vastly complex countdown nears completion, and the moment of truth is at hand for the Titan. After a perfect launching, the Titan thunders downrange. Estimates of its flight, a maximum altitude of 50 miles, a horizontal reach of perhaps 200 miles. Most important of all, buffeted though it was by 40 mile an hour gusts, the Titan never wavered in its flight. The mammoth engine with some 300,000 pounds of thrust never faltered. Evaluation of this maiden flight, over 90% successful. A major stride in America's missile program. West Berlin's mayor, Willie Brandt, accompanied by Mrs. Brandt, arrives in Washington, D.C. in the course of a one-month tour of Canada, the United States, and Southeast Asia. A key figure in the looming crisis of West Berlin's future, his visit came as Secretary of State Dulles met European leaders to discuss strategy. Brandt tells America that his city will not falter under Soviet pressures. That um, you here in the United States and our friends all over the free world can rely upon the people of Berlin. At the same time, the Berliners feel quite sure that they can rely upon their friends abroad. At Fort Myer, Virginia, last rites for crewmen of the unarmed American transport that was shot down last September when it strayed over Soviet territory. From the chapel, the coffins are borne to Arlington National Cemetery, where they will rest in honor. Six bodies were returned by Russia, which denies any knowledge of 11 others aboard the plane. Russia claims the plane crashed and has denounced as false a tape recording of a radio conversation between Red fighter pilots who shot the plane down. The last salute to these men sounds in grim discord against current Soviet talk of wanting peace. <laughs> <laughs> 